list. So this movie's so good, it almost became my favorite Spidey movie of all time. If it wasn't for that ending, let me explain. So Spider-Verse 2 begins with Gwen about one year after the first, where she's trying to play with a band after missing her friends who are far from home. And we get the backstory to her, Peter, who felt so jealous that Gwen had powers that he turned himself into the lizard just to feel special. Boy, we need to talk about Parker, because Attack in the Homecoming was not the move. Oh, dang. The movie continues to feel like a comic come to life, and I don't know how, but they brought it up another level. Like, I had heard that the animators were spending a week just to animate one minute, and it shows. Like, there are watercolored backgrounds that they use as a sort of mood ring to get into the characters' emotions. You know, in between the cut frames, the split screens, all the smears that they had, it felt like an actual experience that I just have to give it, I have to call it, a work of art. Sony's out here making movies. Everyone else making memes. Sorry, the only Italian I know is from Mario Kart. That is cinema. The first fight Gwen gets into is at the art museum where a paper mache vulture appears. It's probably around the same time that Keaton's also got booted over. That's where we meet Spider-Man 2099 who spawns in. And we last saw him in the after credits of the first movie. And it looks like he's worked out a lot. Who are you? The Blue Panther? No. The Caped Blue Seder? I'll take it from here. Clearly he loves squats. After calling him names like Pedro Parker, she also meets Jessica Drew, who's out here swinging as her baby's web slinging in the womb. You're, you're jostling the fetus. My fetus? My problem. Even with the help, Gwen takes down Vulture since she has a better aim than Kate Bishop, but that's when her dad pulls up with a loaded gun since he's been blaming Spider-Woman for the death of Peter. And even after learning that his daughter Spidey he still tries to arrest her? Hands in the air! That's the job. That's when Jessica convinces Miguel to have Gwen join them. Just like that, they become a gateway to another universe. It's about the 20 minute mark when the opening credits finally drops, and that's how you know that you can settle in, because it's gonna be a good one. My name's Miles Morales. For the past year, I've been this dimension's one and only Spider-Man. We reunite with Miles, who's been Spidey for over a year and four months, and the dude has fought more bad guys than the cops, he's gotten more power-ups than his video game, uh, and apologized for more sponsors faster than a YouTuber. But of course, like every Spidey, it's canon to have school conflicts. It's okay. It's a backup school. There's that scene where the counselor, named Mrs. Weber, is trying to define him as a student, and Mao's mom is so upset at him that she snaps in Puerto Rican. But it is kind of nasty when you consider that a kid's whole life really rides on one piece of paper. So are you like a cow or a Dalmatian? I am the spot. <laughs> That's not funny. Miles has his first big fight with a walking Oreo at a convenience store who's using his portal powers to rob an ATM. And while they keep calling him the villain of the week, this man is speaking like it's his coming of age tale. Like he goes on a whole speech for being judged by the color of his spots. Unfortunately for both of us, this is skin. They end up taking the fight back to a set from the first one where the collider wreckage is still under wraps. And we learn that this is his actual origin story because he was that scientist who got hit with the bagel. And now he's kind of pulled a Mysterio since he's mad he wasn't an after credit or even an afterthought. Little does he know he was actually a mistake. And the, and the, the last minute uh, bagel text that was added bagel. right there. <laughs> Which was a joke pitch. Sure. It was a pitch. Yes. That was a joke that uh, Justin That Thompson was taken seriously. <laughs> <embraced. laughs> and now his holes can take him anywhere, everywhere, all at once. <gasps> Wait a minute. Those holes are a two-way street. He uses his gateways to jump into different dimensions, including the one from Venom, where he takes five, a frame that spoils the ending of this movie, and my favorite, which has to be the Lego movie world. Because in the first movie, Lord and Miller, who've made nothing but classics, shouted out their canceled series Clone High, which is barely getting a follow-up 20 years later. So knowing that DC dropped the ball by canceling Lego Batman 2, they now get to piece things together in that Marvel bag. That's all, folks. Is he allowed to say that? Legally? Personally, I was also almost expecting a Pixar world considering how Spider-Verse toppled them after being the standard for so long, but I guess the biggest diss is beating their next film before it even comes out. That said, if you catch the Japanese version for this, it's the one time I'd encourage dubs because it is why. Gwen eventually reunites with Miles where she gives him a mini LME, but doesn't really tell him that she's on a mission to stop the spot. Miles has no riz when shooting his shot. Cause you see, in this Spidey canon, he's able to fall for Gwen. It's just not good when Gwen falls for Spidey. He ends up getting grounded, even though he's like 15 with his own dorm. But at least his roommate has his new game on PS5. Are those my Jordans? I can't help it if we're the same size. All of their mingling means that Spot slips away, causing them to have to travel to another universe that has a city called Moombatten that doesn't go up but down. 
like a K system. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm glad you asked, new guy. I'm not a new guy. Pavitra is their Spidey who takes threading the needle to the beyond and even continues to teach us acronyms. Shy D Chai means D, bro. You're saying D D. Why do people say ATM uh, machine? Who said that? The M stands for machine. I'm gonna be honest, uh, the one that got me was pin number. Miles then meets the coolest Spidey named Spider Punk, who's honestly just Daniel Kaluuya playing Hobie and the Black Messiah. Whatever's real, I was like, you sure? So yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, like, like some words you may not understand like that. But he's like, no, just we'll make, in the real. What, what would you say from London? He's from Camden, which is the birthplace of punk, and is such an anarchist. He snatches all the props around him. I'm like, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm from around the way. I'm leaving with something. I really liked the way that he looked, like a, a Xerox cutout that was shifting with every movement. And even his twip was cool, since they made specific ones for every Spidey, and his was this neat little guitar riff. So, in his fight against capitalism, you can join it by buying his add-on accessories. After they spot the villain in Mumbatan, they stop him from destroying the city, but end up causing a black hole because Miles saves the police captain from here, and we eventually learn that he was supposed to die in order to save the spider first. It's called the Arachno Humanoid Poly Multiverse. You always lose me with that. They finally take Miles to the spider society that's filled with more spidey people than comic-con and there's so much thwipping and quipping in this place it's like having 20 lmes doing a podcast you know you're the only spider-man who isn't funny we're supposed to be funny they give miles a disney day pass in order to not glitch out but at least it's a parker hopper that gives him the ultimate experience that way he's able to meet people who are superior than him some that are too sensational one that works from home and then miguel who's wearing a cape and it's a no on the cape i think it's cool take that off it's ah. disrespectful spider-man doesn't wear a cape I gotta take a pause here to talk about the designs. I am so jealous for those who get to cosplay as Gwen with the hoodie because it looks so sick having the design be on the inside. They've also swapped out her ballet shoes for Chucks, which is cool. The Spider-Gwen ch Chucks, which we just wrote this into the movie, they are hobies. <laughs> and what? You, bar you borrowed them. Stop. I love Miles' reaction because you know he's down bad. Yeah, last week Hobie and I Wait, who, who's Hobie? That said, Peter B still has the worst fashion sense. Like this man arrived to the sequel looking like the Big Lebowski, wearing a pair of Father's Day pantuflas, and yet the first thing he does is call out Miles for his red sides? As if he hasn't been eating more Red 40 munching on those Spider-Verse Whoppers. Bro, how does a baby have better drip than their father? Come on, go easy on the kid. At this point, with so many spider people in so many dimensions, it can get a little overwhelming, but it surprisingly never loses you. Like, it's so good. They tag up the whole movie with hashtags, and even Critical Drinker got the message. Fate of the multiverse. You say the fate of the multiverse, and my brain dies. That's when Miguel introduces the canon connections and how every version of Spider-Man has specific plot points that they have to go through in order for Marvel to make a comic. Like, no matter how many new Spideys, it's always going to be the same old men as voicing J. Jay, there will always be a dead uncle, a dead captain, a spin-off Venom now, and if it's a Spider-Verse album, you know they're gonna go hard. And this time they went with Metro Boomin want some more Nickelodeon. I know the Sunflower Kids who credit Post Malone over Sway Lee are probably not gonna like it as much as the first one, and we'll stick to the score, but I, I thought it was pretty raw. Like, ASAP Rocky's been making more babies than he has albums, so it was good to hear him on a couple tracks. I even like the fact that they got Metro to come in to do a voice for a Spider-Man. There's nowhere to run. My bad, everybody. There was somewhere to run. Here's where they also unleash the Spider-Verse and mix in the live action by showcasing Andrew Garfield and Toby's greatest clips in another uh, set of portals. I gotta pull up the receipts though, cause Lord and Miller did pitch this well before No Way Home. They were just ignored, so I'm glad they finally got it. Even Gambino's back as the Prowler, since he was a big inspiration for why Marvel created Miles in the first place. And half the world was like, Donald for Spider-Man. We're only gonna watch the next Spider-Man of Donald Glover's playing Peter Parker. And the other half was like, he's black, kill him! Like it was so fast. But now that everyone loves him, I'm curious to see if it's gonna be the MCU Prowler that we saw, since they actually made a suit for him and is not CGI. But so far, they've been keeping the Disney references cryptic, you know, just in case they wanna return all the rights and keep all things Spidey at Sony. Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 1999-99. Who's Doctor Strange? Sounds like he maybe shouldn't practice medicine. Smart kid. Mm -hmm. Personally, I can't wait to watch Who Framed Miles Morales. The big issue they're dealing with, though, is the age-old question of sacrificing one person to save the many. Because if they break the canon of what's supposed to happen to a Spider-Man, then it'll cause a spider-fly effect and change everything. And I was just a little confused because I thought Miles already went through the whole losing your uncle thing, but now they have to take away his dad just because he wants to get promoted 
promoted to captain? What? To me, it's one of the things that makes this Spidey stand out because he's not a loner. You know, he has parents who support him and to a degree are a part of his superpower. He doesn't have a guy in the chair. He has his family at the dinner table. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. I can do both. Miguel is the complete inverse of that though. This dude pulled a reverse Fisk where he tried to replace his alternate dead self who had a family in order to claim them as his own. Of course, I broke cannon, then got him all killed, and now he's working for corporate as a CEO bloodsucker who wants to make sure the franchises are intact at all costs. All you had to do was listen. Miles then swings for miles across this universe in order to get all the Spidey people away from headquarters, since his game plan was to lure them all away from their Spider Center. Na 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 na. As they're chasing him, they hit a collision course where Miguel catches him and calls him an anomaly because he doesn't go with the algorithm they have set. Even going as far as calling him a mistake who doesn't belong, snatching an plugging his band so now miles has 2099 problems and a glitch is one but he's making his own blueprint to get the best of both worlds nah i'm gonna do my own thing miles escapes again and makes it to the portal to go home where he stares at margo to let him go and spider bites miguel then sends gwen back home since he considers her a failure as well but now she knows the truth without a reasonable doubt we are supposed to be the good guy we are. What's crazy is that she had joined the Spider Society because she already accepted that her dad was gonna go, that he was gonna be dead, because he, he did pull a gun on her. But when she arrives at home to find out that he quit because, quote, she was the best thing he ever made, man, I had no idea who turned the Dolby into 40X. A big shout out to this movie, though, for balancing what it's like to be a kid growing up, but also showing how tough it is to raise said kids, because even Peter be parenting now? who, for whatever reason, decides to take his kid to work just like Iron Man did, so it, it makes sense that her name would be Mayday Parker. Do you bring our baby to another fight? You asked me not to, so I, I didn't. That's when we get to see a happy Peter who's Mary Jane and are raising a child together, and I liked her little Ted Lasso speech, uh, that little pep talk about there not being a playbook. You know, you just have to adjust at halftime. And with Phil Lord's mom even being a therapist, they gave you a reading list so you know how to talk so kids will listen and listen so kids will talk. Hearing how he was doing Miles, mm -hmm. instantly I was like, oh, okay, I know how to be Peter to him. Wow. And I think that's why Peter holds Jessica's disses about him being a bad mentor so close to heart, because he knows what she really means is bad people parenting. As if she didn't bring her fetus to work. In the end, Miles goes back to what he thinks is his house, not realizing he's far from home, and opens up to his mom that he's Spider-Man. And she's like, who? We then go from after credits to an alternate ending, where Miles ends up in a different dimension where Spider-Man never existed. He's in Earth-42, where his uncle's still alive, but the big reveal is that here, his father is the one who passed and is on the mural. Here, he was raised under his uncle, and now he's the prowler, trapping himself just like he did Peter in the first, as the movie leaves us on a cliffhanger, where Gwen finally forms her band and tours the multiverse to save Miles, since there's no way home without a fight. But... I think I've got the best theory for how it's all gonna end. Let me explain. See, while it may not be Miles who has to do the saving, it could be another spider person who saves his loved one, since it's already hinted at earlier, where Miles talks about being able to eat his cake and eat it too, if he has two cakes. And while there is more than two Spider-Man, even two of him, it's like the mailman having their own mailman, you know? There's dimensions to this. Because if Peter already saved the captain from Moombatten, if Mr. Stacy already avoids death off a technicality, then what's a more profound ending than having a Miles who doesn't even have Spidey powers coming in and helping save the loved one that he couldn't in his universe? Are you okay? Are you okay? Sounds canon to me. On top of that, Gwen mentioned doing a little time travel in the first movie when she hopped over to Miles' world, so considering that the moment Miles gets bit in the first is him drawing something very familiar, we could have him going from being an anomaly to a paradox? You know, it's all connected like a web. There's then that line Gwen says in this one at the beginning about being modern commentary, but it's still being art, and I think remixing is the main part of this story. Remember how the counselor wanted to write him a story about struggling in order to get a slot in college? There aren't a lot of slots. A lot of these are part-time. Well, this new Miles is just a version where he didn't get as lucky, since 42 isn't just a number of this other universe. It's also the literal lottery ball number that got him into that good school. It's not about the other side of the multiverse. It's the other side of the tracks. There were clues he was in a different world in this one, through the colors and what he was wearing, but even in the first Spider-Verse, he had those Prowler colors before that Nexus event of getting bit. If not, he might have trained as Prowler and not Spidey. If not, he might have had braids to be more stealthy and spend more time at home for his Spanish to be better. Yes, so no, it's my fault. Que, que eso que esto no my fault. Miles 42 still has the smarts and could have known about his homecoming, because having a bunch of explainers immediately call him the villain 
kind of feels like a Rorschach, because like Miles said in his final speech to his mom, he made it to the top, but they didn't want him. He went out there to see everything he could, and now he's not afraid, because he knows he can beat them. And what I worry about most is they won't look out for you like us. I feel like that message goes beyond the movie, because just look at how long this style of animation took to take over, and now everyone's copying it, when they were probably dismissing it for years. Look at the receipts the filmmakers now have since they've proven their idea works, how it's taken three animations just to pitch a live action Miles, because to everyone, you're just an anomaly until you become the norm. Hey. Yeah? Your shoe's untied. Yeah, I'm aware. It's a choice. As someone who gets dismissed a lot, not really for what I say, but how I'm saying it, it hit. You know, this is a movie for all those who still get the red squiggly line under their name because they're not in the system. For those who feel like they're overlooked, underestimated, or can't open up. For those who are still more worried about a seat at the table when they should be focusing on the people already eating with them. Did you see this as all as a, as a, a commentary on fandom? Uh, you would be foolish to see this movie and think that they weren't thinking about fans the entire time. But I don't think, I think that it's a broader, it, it could be bigger than that. Miles' challenges or him being shut down. Um, I literally just finished remember, like thinking, reminiscing about the times where, where I was underestimated. <laughs> Um, there was a point in time where, where people couldn't imagine, couldn't, couldn't fathom um, my life today. Just don't get lost. Trust me. So while others may question your power, you still have a responsibility to keep going. Not spoiling then. We both cool with the ending. I love the smile. One smiled, one kept the poker face. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs>